there is a place where the tiger is still king of the jungle. The Sundarbans forest that borders Bangladesh and India. This vast mangrove forest is a last stronghold for the endangered Bengal tiger. It's also a place where these beautiful big cats have a terrible reputation. Some have developed a taste for human flesh. In bad years, over 50 people are killed and many injured. There's growing fear and hostility. Tiger scientists in Bangladesh are desperate to prevent further bloodshed. But if a solution can't be found, the tiger's days will be numbered. One village has a bold plan to train street dogs to protect them from the man-eating tiger on their doorstep. But will these mongrels be any match for the biggest of the big cats? A man-eating tiger has struck again. A fisherman has been killed and his friends want to retrieve his body from the forest. As the tiger could still be guarding the corpse, it's a very risky thing to do. Tiger biologist Adam Barlow and his forest department team want the group to turn back. percent sure People don't bark a jaga for me. Adam's an expert on the man-eating tigers of the Sundarbans and knows these people are playing with fire. We try to persuade them not to go in there. This is a very bad idea, but they're going to go in anyway. And we're going to try and help them a little bit, make it a bit safe for them. Um, but this is really not uh, a safe situation. Adam's worked with tigers in Asia for over eight years, but he's never known man-eating to be as bad as it is here in Bangladesh. Lots of tiger tracks uh, here. We're very close to the spot where this man was killed. Now I'm going to try and organize things so it's a bit safer. Egg minute, egg minute, OK. <laughs> Adam gives the dead man's friends some critical safety advice before they enter the tiger's territory. So, I'm going to watch the Petri Jaite Shamoi, Abner Ekta Bondu Shate, Shop Shamoi Ekta Bondu. And he Jodi Park as to say, and he rag as say, running na, and he joker jok, joker jok, and he lati, okay? And he Ekta Mushobdo, and he Aro Manush Ashpe. Take a say. After a lethal bite to the man's neck or throat, the tiger would have dragged the victim into dense forest. A man's body is large enough to provide meals for several days. There's some blood from the tiger victim. Very fresh still. Still wet. Still following the blood trail. They found a bit of cloth from the man's clothing that was uh, the guy that was killed. The fisherman's mutilated body has been found. The tiger hasn't finished its meal. We've got the, just got the body, we're just coming out of the jungle. Uh, the tiger didn't attack us on the way out, which was really good. 
And now they're going to transport the body back to the village for a proper burial. Before they leave the area, there's something they must do. Material from the dead man's shirt will be a warning to anyone else. Their mission's accomplished, but they leave heavy-hearted. The Sundarbans is the largest mangrove forest in the world six times the size of Greater London. It's a tidal jungle that's been created where the Ganges and Brahmaputra rivers enter the Bay of Bengal. It's hostile to humans, but the delta is rich and diverse in wildlife and a sanctuary for 400 or so Bengal tigers. Throughout Asia and the Russian Far East, tigers are on the brink of extinction. The Sundarbans is one of the largest tracts of wilderness left in their range. Tigers are usually frightened of people, but not here. Many of these animals are known to be habitual man-eaters. Adam and the Forest Department's Tiger Response Team are battling to save an endangered big cat while also struggling to keep local people safe. The tigers making their job increasingly difficult because it's no longer just the people working inside the forest who are at risk from attack. Tigers can easily cross rivers. They're excellent swimmers. And some are venturing into villages that border the forest. For over a year, the residents of Chanpai, on the northeast edge of the forest, have been terrorized by a predatory tiger. For many months, it killed livestock and dogs, but one night, it took its first human victim. Adams come to Chanpai with fellow tiger scientist Monirul Khan to piece together what happened. Someone is here. Krishna Bodo is the son of the woman who died. Oh, <laughs> senseless <laughs> But what provoked this attack? Looking at this wall, it looks quite substantial to us, but it's pretty flimsy for a tiger. 
and no more than some vegetation it might see in the jungle. And it sensed the woman in there, punched a hole through, and grabbed the woman out. Um, the tragic thing and the surprising thing is, is that um, from this vantage point, you can see a whole load of cows over there. So the tiger's come here, it's got the choice. There's some cows over there, there's, some old, there's an old lady in there. I'm going to get the old lady. Uh, that means that this tiger is probably very bold, dangerous, and this is the tiger we uh, really want to deal with and uh, lessen the chance of this happening again. This tiger is clearly no longer afraid of people, and the villagers now fear for their lives. No one really knows why tigers become man-eaters. Old, sick or injured tigers may find killing humans easier than animal prey. Perhaps some tigers have added people to their diet after feeding on the victims of devastating cyclones. What's clear is that for Sundarbans tigers, eating humans can become a habit. So the Chunpai tiger must be stopped in its tracks. On the forest side of the river, Adam discovers just how close it's coming to the village. We have some tiger tracks here. This is a pretty normal thing. We're in the Sundarbans. Uh, the trouble is, uh, we're also right next to a village. And this tiger might be the very tiger that's crossing this, into this village and killing livestock and killing one old lady. Uh, the villagers are pretty frightened. Uh, over 60 animals have been killed. And if we don't sort out this problem soon, we're going to have more livestock loss, more possible human tragedy, and nearly definitely a dead tiger. There are so few tigers left in the wild that each one is precious. They are legally protected in Bangladesh. But it's hard to persuade local people of this tiger's value when it's causing so much tragedy. It's a complex problem, but Monirul has come up with a simple and radical solution. Village dogs. They're lowly mongrels, but Monirul thinks they could be trained up, not only to warn people of an approaching tiger, but also to scare it away for good. Do you want to be a tiger hound? In order to test his idea out, Monirul needs the help of a professional. Mariel Schmidt is a dog trainer from the United States who's volunteered to come to Chanpai to see if she can help make Monirul's idea work. Hello. You must be Maria. Hi, Hi. Monirul. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Chanpai. Thank you. Thanks for coming. If we can use these dogs to spot the tiger, or to chase it back to the forest, that's a very good solution. Yeah, I, I look forward to meeting the local dogs and seeing what they're like to work with. They're probably fairly different than what I've worked with at home. Just be careful what you're asking. At home in Montana, Marielle runs general obedience classes. But she also specializes in training guard dogs. In America, Certain breeds are already used to frighten bears away from people. But no one's tried pitting street dogs against a tiger. Bangladeshi dogs are treated like pests, not pets, and are fearful of everything. Oh, yeah, that one's a little shy for what we need. Yeah. 
It's a little skinny, too. Yeah. Marielle has just three weeks to see if she can transform them into obedient tiger hounds. Adam, meanwhile, is trying to control the immediate crisis. He knows the Champai tiger might strike again at any time. Adam and his team will offer the villagers advice and support if there's further tiger trouble. They post stickers around the village to publicize their tiger helpline. Uh, we're going around now for all the mobile phone shops. These are the main places where everyone goes. If someone uh, hasn't got a mobile phone, they're going to go there and see that sticker. Someone calls a number, um, and if there's a tiger in the village, then we're going to rush to that spot and try and uh, stop chaos uh, happening, stop people being killed by tiger, stop the tiger being killed. If the village dogs are to help long term, Monirul and Mariel first need to find out whether any of them have hidden talent. The villagers of Chanpai have been invited to a dog audition in the school playground. The motley crew that turn up aren't the pedigree breeds Mariel's used to working with. <laughs> I can see right away that this, this one's not going to work out for us. No, he's too, too afraid. Um, no, when they, when they uh, won't eat meat, they're too afraid to, to work with. So thank you. Yeah, no score. No, thank you. Where's the rope for this dog? Get the dog out of here. Get that dog out of rope or out of here. No, no, no. Get him. Get him. It's a bit of a crazy situation here with lots of uh, lots of people and dogs and activity and when you bring them in close proximity it's not un uncommon to have some tensions. This uh, dog is stiff and resistant, fearful, submissive but fearful. It's not going to work out for this one. Will there be any candidates? So his name is Sheik and uh, he's two years old. Okay. I'm going to bang this and it may startle him and then I want to see how he recovers or how he reacts to it. Okay. Not too bad. Oh, right back. Good boy. Good boy. He's, he's brave yeah. and um, fairly dominant as we saw from his behavior with other dogs, which could be a little problematic. Let's give him a uh, six. with the females because they spend much of their life here raising puppies or being in heat and uh, that could be distracting for the boys in the pack so probably it's best to stick with males for the pack work. Thank you. We'll let her go take care of her puppies. So no score. No score. Hello. Good boy. Oh, this is nice. He's much more responsive. Willing to take it from my hand the first time. Did you eat that? Good boy. Careful. Just one, one at a time. Okay. So let's try it. No, see? No. It's okay. 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 I kind of expected that. Don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. His name is Bullet. Bullet. Okay. <laughs> He's the first one that's been quite aggressive taking the food from my hand, which is not necessarily a bad thing. He would need to learn respect. He's a little jumpy around his head sometimes, a little nervous about being touched back there, um, but that can be a, a, a bit of a dominance trait too. Okay, I like him. Okay. I give him my highest score. We'll give him a seven. Okay, that's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. So this is the Good highest score. So, yep, highest score so far. At last, a handful of dogs with some talent, but they're still a long way from creating a canine defense force. There's mounting pressure on Adam to build up a profile of the Chan Pai serial killer so he can work out how to deal with it. It's not a job for the faint-hearted. I'm a little bit nervous. Normally a tiger is afraid of humans, but this tiger's gotten over that fear and now it's trying to kill cattle, it's starting to kill even one person. And the, the forest is so dense that I could come across this tiger and I'm not going to see it until it's like two meters away. We've got some bear spray, we've got uh, forest guards, we've got a knife, and uh, hopefully the tiger's going to hear 
me coming before it's too late. Uh, so we've got to rely on a bit of experience and hopefully uh, the tiger uh, doesn't fancy uh, attacking me today. Tiger tracks, uh, a few days old. Probably now, I don't really know, it's a little bit messed up. But heading this way, heading towards the village. I'm going to see where they go. Its gender is significant. A female may have hungry cubs to feed. If she's a man-eater, her cubs may also develop the taste for human flesh. A male tiger patrols a territory four times larger than a female's, so he will have different hunting patterns. Just knowing this will help Adam decide how to best protect the village. It's the first day of the tiger hound training. The chosen dogs and their owners make their way from Chan Pai and neighboring villages to Mariel's training ground. Eight dogs were selected from the dog audition. Mariel now needs to turn them into a well-behaved pack. It looks like it's going to be interesting here. A lot of uh, growling and attitude already. So, hope we can keep the peace. <laughs> OK, maybe backwards. Congratulations. You are all now tiger hounds in training. They've been selected for a very important job to help protect you and the people of your village from tigers. Mariel starts off by giving the dogs vaccinations, new leashes, and collars. I got an extra large collar for B2. We have Sheik, the troublemaker, loudmouth, who always seems to lose his collar and leash. So hopefully we can keep this one on him. It goes uh, between his shoulder blades, right on his skin. He's a little excited about the meat. Bullet, it's the okay. star of the audition, is bounding with enthusiasm. While Bitu's reluctant to follow orders. Good. Mariel's first challenge is to get the dogs to cooperate with her. But her real problem will be to get the dogs to cooperate with each other. Enough of that. Okay. Okay, we have a lot of uh, very strong dogs here, and all all males, and that's uh, a setup for a lot of uh, aggression amongst them. But we're hoping to save that aggression for the tigers. Okay, too close. Okay, too close. Barely an hour passes before the first casualty. B2 slipped his collar and attacked some. He's got a pretty nasty looking wound in his hawk. Good boy. <laughs> so I'm going to have to be retired from the training at least for a couple of days, and we'll see how this is uh, going. It should either be getting much better or it may be getting infected. If the dogs can't work together, they'll never have the strength in numbers they need to stand up to a tiger. Son's injury is a measure of how antisocial these local dogs are. The dogs selected by Mariel are all alpha males. To survive, they've had to look out for themselves. But as loners, they've made themselves vulnerable. Tigers will eat whatever they can catch. As top predator here, they play a vital role in keeping the forest wildlife balanced and varied. So why has the Champai tiger turned its back on its natural prey and begun to eat domestic animals and people instead? In the forest near the village, Adam makes a discovery that may explain why the Champai tiger has become so bold. This is uh, cattle tracks. This means that from the village, cows are crossing over and grazing here. Uh, this might be part of the problem. If a tiger sees cattle a lot, uh, it's going to get used to it, start eating it. Maybe overcome some of its fear of things associated with, with uh, people. All over the place, just cattle. I just can't believe how many tracks there are here. Uh, if I'm a tiger and I'm hungry, I see a big fat cow wandering around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it after a while. 
sometime during the night, the tiger will be walking close by to here. And at some stage, it's going to make a choice. Does it go to stay in the forest? Does it go into the village? Take some easy pickings from the cattle in there. But Adam and his team are finding further reasons for the growing tiger problem. As the villages that lie close to the Sundarbans expand, wood and other forest resources are being used up. People are also illegally poaching deer, the tiger's favorite wild prey. Many villagers realize the tiger's going hungry. <laughs> Right up next to the village, there's tiger track. There's one tiger track right here. Uh, maybe it crossed at some stage. Um, hopefully, it didn't cause any trouble. We're going to follow these tracks a little bit further, see where it went. Even if the villagers stop grazing their cattle in the forest and poaching deer, it may be too late to reverse the eating habits of the Junpai tiger. It must be stopped from coming to the village. Good boy, Shake. Atta boy, you ready? Shake heel. Good heel. Good boy. It was a slow start, but now the tiger hounds are getting the hang of things. Good. Som's leg is on the mend, and it looks like he can rejoin the team. Good, it looks very good. I think he's just about back to new. Okay, Som. Marielle needs as many dogs as she can get. Good sit. Give it to him. Good sit. After just a few days, the dogs are becoming more responsive. It can take them a while. Make sure that they say good, stay, when the dog's holding it. Especially this may seem a far cry from tiger chasing, but absolute obedience is vital if the dogs are to be focused on the job. One dog in particular has shot to the top of the class. Well, Bullet's kind of our star pupil so far. He's progressing very quickly, and that's a, from a combination of a trainable temperament and, a, and an effective handler who's done a good job of learning the cues and, and having good timing. So it's coming together nicely. Bullet shows strong leadership when Mariel introduces the dogs to their first tiger. They've yet to discover the difference between fake fur and the real thing. Lakshmi has been in another fight and has even worse injuries than before. Although the villagers live with tigers on their doorstep, few have ever seen one and know little about them. So Monirul, Mariel and Adam invite the whole village to the screening of a tiger film in the school playground. By appreciating the tiger better, maybe people will have second thoughts about killing it. There's a lot of persuading to do, because it's on a dark night like this that the Chanpai tiger strikes again. This time, it's only a goat. But Monirul knows, from eight years studying tigers, that the loss of just one animal can have a devastating impact on family fortunes. So there's a fresh pug mark over here. The edict didn't get it, right? Can you tell me what you can do? Can you tell me what you can do? So the tiger grabbed the goat from here and took into the forest, which is only a few meters away, and there is only a creek between the village and the forest. It's a big loss for him as he is a poor man and the goat was pregnant, so it's a very big loss for the family. Chan 
Chun Pai is losing patience with this tiger. I'm going to call Adam and tell him about this tiger. Monirul wants Adam to track where this tiger went after making its kill. The tiger is now killing on a weekly basis. It may be a protected animal, but if it carries on like this, villagers will take the law into their own hands. Even Adam is surprised by its brazen behavior. Uh, a goat was killed just over here, dragged by the tiger across this canal, walked through someone else's backyard, jumped from over here, right over here, uh, carried on over here. We're quite far from the jungle. Jumped over here and went into these open fields over there and headed back towards the jungle with the, with the uh, goat in its mouth. It's really uh, amazing to me how bold this tiger is. It's just wandering around, doesn't care that there's humans about. And reaching the riverbank, Adam finds the trails red hot. The tiger's been seen in the last hour. Sure. So he was actually on the other side of the canal. Maybe it was really close, I don't know. There's always some kind of crazy story around uh, tigers, but definitely there's some tracks over there. And we're going to have a look right now. Really new tracks. These are about as fresh as they get. Uh, I think the, the boy story is true. The tiger was here and it's gone right in this bit of jungle. It's probably very close and there's no reason for us to go in there. So I'm just going to back out um, and keep, keep safe. There's no, yeah, the tiger's in there. Let's go, let's go back. This is the closest Adam has ever come to the Changpai tiger. It would have been hiding just meters away in the dense forest. It's way too close for comfort. The dogs are needed more than ever, but no one knows how they'll deal with a real threat. Monirul and Mariel have obtained special permission to introduce three of the dogs, Tom, Som and Bitu, to a captive zoo tiger. Oh, what a magnificent creature. Well, this will be really exciting to see what the dogs do. There's no doubt we'll get a, a reaction today. One by one, the dogs are taken to meet the tiger in its den. Good boy. There we go. Oh, we're right here. Okay. Look, Bit the tiger. first. There, there it is. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good tiger. Good boy. Good tiger. Good boy. That's it. But Bitu doesn't even make it into the enclosure. Good boy. I'm not going to push him to go any closer because that's obviously very scary for him. Good boy. Good boy, Tom. Good boy. Where's Tom's tiger? up next. Good Will boy. he be braver than Bitu? Good, good. Good, Tom. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's the way, Tom. Good for you. Ooh, look at the tigers. We're going to watch out. Good boy. Good for you. Good boy. He got a little spooked there initially, but um, he held his ground surprisingly well, especially when the tigers had a pretty assertive response to him there. The tiger's last visitor is Som. Okay, I think Som's going to give us our strongest reaction yet, one way or the other. He's been more tuned into scent, which he's already picking up here nicely. Where's the tiger, Som? Where's the tiger? Good boy, Som. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, tiger. Good boy. That a boy, Som. Good boy. That's pretty impressive, stand up to that. Good boy. Good boy, Som. The next step is to see whether they gain strength in numbers. A pack of three head in together for a face-off with the tiger. Good boy. 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 Good boy.
Bitu was the weakest link, but brothers Tom and Som took heart from each other, showing that dogs that have grown up together work best as a pack. Okay, let, let's move it out here. I don't want to think our point's been made here. Let's, let's head on out. Tom, Som, and Bitu's owners have a particular reason for wanting their dogs to protect them from tigers. They have one of the most dangerous jobs in Bangladesh. They are forest honey collectors. On April the 1st, they join other teams gathered from across the Sundarbans to wait for the official start of the honey collection season. Hundreds of boats race towards the forest to find the best honey spots. But not all these men will return. Last year, 20 honey collectors were killed by tigers. Monirul and Adam want to find ways of reducing the casualties. Tom, Som and Bittu's owners would also have liked their newly trained dogs on board, but domestic animals are currently not allowed in the forest. In the absence of dogs, they'll have to rely on spiritual protection. They will not venture into the forest until the gunin or shaman has performed his traditional ritual. Through his chanting and gestures, he contacts the spirits to find out whether this forest is safe to enter. <laughs> Honey is a precious commodity, but they will collect as much as they can in the shortest time possible. They are dicing with death. In dense forest, tigers wait silently and ambush their prey. We found the hive, and uh, now we're going to burn some leaves to smoke out the bees so they, they're not so aggressive. Collect some honey and go back to the boat. The smoke may make the bees less aggressive, but it reduces visibility to zero. It's now that the risk of tiger attack is highest. Monirul sees just how useful dogs could be. I think uh, dogs could make a big difference because it could smell the tiger when people are busy at work or when they smoke the honeycomb and perhaps would save their lives. Although it is not permitted now, but I hope in the future perhaps they will be able to use the dogs when they work. It's a dangerous job and for not really that much reward and they really run a risk of being attacked and, and quite a few of them are. So if there's any way we can make them a bit safer and we've got to try those, try those things. The Chiang Pai street dogs were once treated like dirt, but now both handlers and their dogs have become local celebrities. Marielle even has her own fan club. Wow, a whole book. Thank you. Look at them all. Beautiful. 
Star status is all very well, but Monirul and Marielle want to show the village as a whole how the dogs might offer a bit more protection. It's my hope that in my short time that I've been here, I've been able to excite some people about the possibilities uh, that happen when we learn to communicate with our dogs. Where'd he go? Good boy, where'd he go? Som has a fantastic nose for tiger scent and has been trained to sit once he gets a whiff from one of the boxes. Yes, Som! Yes, Som! He doesn't let Marielle down. Good. I think that's probably good, right? Okay. Okay! After the show, the Chun Pai pack assembles on a night patrol. If they smell a tiger, they'll alert the villagers and try to drive it back to the forest. In just a few weeks, they've been transformed from street dogs to tiger hounds and have given the local people some much needed courage and confidence in dealing with their problem tiger. But this is not the only big cat giving grief in the Sundarbans. The Tiger Response Team has learned via their hotline of a serious incident far to the west of Chandpai. The Tiger has entered a village and some people are injured and the Tiger is in fact dead. Uh, but we don't have much more information than that. We're on our way to find out. It's dark by the time Adam reaches the forest guard post where the dead tiger's body has been taken. It's a tragic sight to see such a magnificent and rare animal bludgeoned to death. We're now trying to weigh the tiger, trying to find out uh, how heavy it is. We don't know much about tigers in the Sundarbans, how big they are. Uh, and this is important information to see if this tiger is a uh, a little bit different to tigers living in other areas. Measurements from other tigers killed by people suggest that Sundarbans tigers may be much smaller than other Bengal tigers. Adam notes this tiger's identity, sex and age. We know it's a young female because of the condition of its teeth. The teeth are very new, very sharp and not worn in any way. It's got all its incisors, all its canines, I think it's probably about three years old. This young female was close to breeding age. Over the past century, tiger numbers worldwide have plummeted by 95%. And now there's one less tiger in the Sundarbans. Adam wants to find out more about how she died. But for that, He'll have to wait for daybreak. Back in Changpai, Marielle has just a couple of days left before she must return to the U.S. Great job, guys. That was uh, much better and more focused. Um, like to see if we can get it even a little bit more. While the pack perfect their tiger driving skills, she has one final job to do. She'll have to choose one of the dog handlers to continue the training. One has exactly the skills and attitude she's looking for. Hey, hey, Good. Hey, it's Shubod, hey, the owner of star dog Bullet. Hey, hey, if local hey, people can show such resolve, then Adam won't have tragic missions like this. He travels to where the other tiger was killed and talks to the locals to build up a picture of what happened. This is the place where they first saw the tiger. About 20, 25 people came with sticks. It attacked one person. Then the tiger just shot off in this direction. We're going to go and see the next scene of uh, what happened. Frightened and confused, the tiger would have lashed out in self-defense. This is the next place. The tiger paused again. We traveled about uh, 40 meters through the paddy fields. They shouted. They tried to get close to it, try to scare it away. It attacked one. 
So again, the tiger paws, we've traveled about 15 meters. The same group of people. At the moment, the, there's just a small group of villagers. Right here, it attacked three people, injuring, biting, scratching, uh, and again, it moved on, trying to, just trying to escape these angry villagers. Everyone is coming, everyone from the uh, village is coming, maybe more than a, one or 2,000 people. This is the last place that uh, the tiger attacked someone. And suddenly you come across the scene of a very violent and frightening confrontation. Yesterday at 11 o'clock, a tiger was right here. And there was maybe two or 3,000 villagers surrounding it, beating it to death with sticks. Why it happened was because people didn't know what to do. They were afraid. And they had no training in, in how to proceed. Um, we're going to change that. We're going to have teams that can respond to these incidents and know how to work around tigers and know when to uh, intervene and when to just keep people separate from the tiger until it has a chance to go back to the jungle. Adam has a huge task ahead of him. But Marielle's work here is done. This is the end of our training together, and it's been a wonderful experience for me. I sure it's time for the dog pack to graduate. The dogs are capable of. Um, I've written up a training manual that uh, I will leave with you that's been translated so that you have the tools to continue the work after I go. The dogs are still a trial study, but the villagers of Changpai have seen their potential. Long term, they'll need to breed the best qualities from their dogs. Som's superb scent detection. Bullets, courage and intelligence. Shake's aggressive attitude. Still. Packs could be formed in other villages bordering the forest. Sure enjoyed working with you. You're a fun dog to... You all kinds of stuff with, and you, you lead them on into the future, okay, Bullet? Yes. Sire lots of future tiger hounds. Hopefully, Monirul's idea and Mariel's legacy will be a lasting one. The human tiger problem must be resolved because the repercussions are huge for people and tigers. If people can find a way of minimizing conflict, then the Bengal tiger might be seen as the region's greatest asset, rather than its most terrifying threat. And the Sundarbans will remain a last great refuge for the tiger.